Good morning, or good evening, or good afternoon, whatever it might be, whenever you're watching this there, Trig Identity fans. This is where we're going to go into 6.2. So I highly recommend that if you haven't yet, you've tried all of these, and once you've done that, and you've checked your answers, here's the answers on the next page, you are now ready to move on to the big leagues here, the tough ones. They're called Sum and Difference and Double Angle identities and oh if we had the time let me tell you deriving these formulas is all kinds of fun but we really don't so we're going to just kind of present them as facts these are identities that have been proven beyond any shadow of a doubt so we can use them to prove other identities and you'll probably notice that this is about half of the formula page for the course that I handed you way back in, in, on the first day. So if you're ever wondering, when are we going to get to all these formulas? Well, notice they're all kind of right here in this one lesson. So it comes down to recognition. Here's what I mean by that. Example one asks us to simplify this expression. And you're looking at this expression going, uh, well, that's nice. I do know what the cosine of... of pi by 3 is, but I honestly don't have memorized the cosine of pi by 12. Am I allowed to use my calculator? No, you are not allowed to use your calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and try to recognize which of these formulas does it look like. Notice it has cosine, cosine, plus sine, sine of two different angles. Take, give yourself a sec. Where do you see cosine, cosine, sine, sine of two different angles. And look, 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 there it is right there. So I'm allowed to use that identity. In fact, I'll, I'll even write it down. I'll write it down that it's the cosine of some angle, they'll call it alpha, if you're wondering what the heck that symbol was, it's the Greek letter alpha, times the cosine of some angle, we'll call it beta, plus the sine of some angle alpha, times the sine of some angle beta, is equal to the cosine of alpha minus beta. Thank goodness you don't ever have to memorize these formulas. We give them to you. You've seen them on the formula sheet. But notice that I can just say that this thing looks exactly like that, except that alpha is pi by 3, and beta is pi by 12. So I can replace this whole thing with the cosine of pi by 3 minus pi by 12. And really, ignore the pi's. Think about this, if you like, as just a third minus a twelfth. Right? Well, think about that. Need a common denominator, so that's four twelfths minus one twelfth, which is three twelfths, which is one quarter. Aha! So this is like saying it's the cosine of pi by 4. And, oh yeah, I know the cosine of pi by 4. The cosine of pi by 4 is, in fact, root 2 over 2. If you were ever totally stuck, I mean, we wouldn't let you use a calculator on the test, but if you're ever totally stuck, you could check this answer. It should work. First, make sure that you are actually in um, radian mode, which we are. And then actually run this formula through. The cosine of pi by 3 times the cosine of pi by 12, close bracket, plus the sine of pi by 3 times the, oops, times the sine of pi by 12, close my brackets and hit equals, and yep, that is exactly what root 2 divided by 2 is. Oops, I'm not like that, it's not. There we go. Ta-da! So, yep. Yeah. But notice, that was actually more work with the calculator than it was to recognize that it's just this little formula. All right, cool. So there's the first example. Second one. Once again, you're probably thinking to yourself, hmm, I don't happen to know sines and cosines of 47 degrees, but it doesn't matter. You know the identity that the sine squared of theta plus the cos squared of theta is equal to 1. So this thing, no matter 47 degrees, no matter how many degrees it is, that one's 1. So there we go, that one's, that one's kind of cheesy. 
This one here is interesting. 1 minus 2 sine squared pi by 8. Does that look like anything up there? Well, actually, yeah, it does. It looks like this one right here. It's what we call a double angle identity. So let's just write the actual identity down. They don't give us a whole lot of room in this one. The identity is that the cosine of double some angle is equal to 2 times the cos squared of that angle not doubled minus 1. So if I look at this thing, oh, whoops, hang on, I wrote down the wrong one. Oh, messed up my pretty notes. I meant to write that one down. 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. There we go. The other one's true as well, but this is the one we want because it looks the most like this. So basically, alpha is pi by 8 for me. So this is going to be 1 minus 2 times um, the, uh, or wait, pi by 8? Is it pi by 8? Hmm, okay. 2 times, it is pi by 8, okay. 2 times the sine squared of pi by 8. Now, pi by 8 is not on my unit circle either, so I, I think I am going to have to maybe look this up. Hmm, yeah, I guess I am going to have to look that up. Okay, so let's see, what is pi by 8? I'm going to have to use a calculator for that. So let's see, the sine of pi by 8. If we do give you ones that aren't in the unit circle, then they, they're meant to be calculator questions. So, okay, I need that um, squared. So I need the sine of that squared. So I'm going to take my answer and square it. And then I'm going to double it and minus it from 1. So I'm just going to go 1 minus 2 times my answer. And there we go. Isn't that interesting? Does that look familiar? Does it look familiar? Yay, we had that already. It's actually root 2 over 2. Cool. All right. So that's A, B, and C in example 1. Let's see what the next page holds. It says we can use these formulas to determine sorry, you're trying to stay organized here the exact value of trig ratios that do not look like they're on the unit circle. So, let's see sine of 7 pi by 12. Well, yeah, 12ths aren't on the unit circle, are they? But think about this if we know 7 pi by 12, think about this 7 pi by 12 is like saying 6 pi by 12 plus 1 pi by 12. Well, hey, I know that. That's pi by 2, but uh, I don't know that. So no, that one doesn't help me. It's also 2 pi by 12 plus 5 pi by 12. Oh, I know that one. Oh, but I don't know that one. Keep looking. It's also 3 pi by 12 plus 4 pi by 12. Aha! We Goldilocks our way to the answer. That one was too hot, that one was too cold, this one was just right. Boom. I know both of those. If you're looking at that going, how do you know both of those? Because this is like saying the sine of 3 pi by 12 plus 4 pi by 12, which is really the sine of, simplify that fraction, pi by 4 plus pi by 3. So that's my alpha. That's my beta. Go to my page of crazy formulas. What is the sine of alpha plus beta? Right there. It's sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta. So I'm going to just write that formula down. The sine of alpha plus beta is equal to sine of alpha cos of beta plus cos of alpha sine of beta. And this is alpha, this is beta. So the sine of pi by 4 plus pi by 3 is, and then we just substitute those two things for alpha and beta. So it's the sine of pi by 4 times the cosine of pi by 3 plus the cosine of pi by 4 times the sine of pi by 3. Okay, now we head to our unit circle. Pi by 3 is here, right? And it has a 1 half root 3 over 2. Pi by 4 is here. 
and that's root 2 over 2 root 2 over 2. So this is root 2 over 2. The cosine of pi by 3 is 1 half. The cosine of pi by 4 is root 2 over 2. And the sine of pi by 3 is root 3 over 2. So let's simplify that out, shall we? That is root 2 plus two, root 2 times root 3. So that's going to be root 2 plus root 6 all over 4, because that's a common denominator of 4. Can I simplify that anymore? No, nope. that's as simple as that's going to get. Okay, so there's example 2. Example 3, what's the cosine of 195 degrees? All right, well, notice the 5. Hey, that should give me a hint. Anything on my unit circle here, well, this is, I know my 60s and I know my 30s, but there's only one type of angle that ends in a 5, and that's my 45 family. So I'm thinking to myself, must be in the 45 degree family. So let's start playing with 45 degrees. Um, hang on. 45 plus 150. Hey, that's in my 30 degree family. So I got something in the 30 degree family and something in the 45 degree family. I got this. So now I go back to my formula sheet. Oh, formula sheet. What is the cosine of adding two angles? It's cos cos minus sine sine. So I'm going to write that down first. So cosine of alpha plus beta is cos cos minus sine sine. You know, when I was your age, they used to make us memorize all this crap. Lucky you, you get to look it up every time. So this is alpha, this is beta. So this is going to be the cosine of 45 plus 150 is, and let's plug it into this formula, the cosine of 45 times the cosine of 150 minus the sine of 45 times the sine of 150. And okay, where's 150? Let's get a new unit circle out. Well, 45 is again is root 2 over 2. That's 45. Where's 150? Well, 150 is 30 degrees away from being 180. So it's got the same coordinates as, as a 30 degree angle would, which is root 3 over 2, 1 half. But the root 3 over 2 is a negative, right? So this is equal to the cosine of 45, root 2 over 2. The cosine of 150, which is the x value, which is negative root 3 over 2, minus the sine of 45 times the sine of 150, which is positive 1 half. So that's going to equal negative root 6 minus root 2 over 4. Okay? And there we go. There's those first two examples. Next, example 3. Consider that expression. Determine the uh, non what does it say? The non-permissible values for this expression. Okay, so what are the non-permissible values for this expression? So the sine of 2 theta cannot be 0, right? That, that would be not permissible. Okay, what do I know about the sine of 2 theta? Let's see, what do I know about the sine of 2 theta? Right there, the sine of 2 theta is 2 times sine theta cos theta. So that would be 2 times the sine of theta cos of theta equals 0. All right, where is that not permissible? Well, anything times 0 is 0. So that means sine of theta is 0 is not permissible, and cosine of theta is 0 is not permissible. And that happens in a couple places, right? So uh, if we're just talking about between 0 and 2 pi, theta sine is 0 when theta is 0 and 2 pi, and cosine is 0 when theta is um, pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2. Okay, so if you wanted to do this over all reals, you could say that theta doesn't exist at any integer multiple of a half of pi. So I could just go a half of pi times k, where k is some integer. That's a z, not a 2. Sorry, bad writing. Next, for the B part, it says simplify the expression using one of the three trigonometric functions. So in other words, I can't leave it as sine 2 theta. I want it just in a basic sine theta or cos theta. Or it says one of the three primary. I could use tan theta. 
But the first thing I want to do is I want to simplify this so that I get rid of that the, the two thetas. So the cos of two theta, now you're gonna notice the cos of two theta, I've got actually a bunch of choices here. The cosine of two theta, there's three different formulas that I can use. I'm gonna pick this one. Why am I picking that one? Because I kind of want it to be as simple as possible, and I notice that the bottom has sine thetas in it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick that. So I'm gonna pick, um, so let's see. It's 1, and instead of cos 2 theta, I'm going to replace cos 2 theta with this middle guy, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So we're replacing this with 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. All over, and sine 2 theta, you only have one choice for that, it's 2 sine theta cos theta. 2 sine theta cos theta. All right. Now, maybe you can see now why I like this one. 1 minus 1 is nothing, and minus a negative is 2. Right? Cancels the negative when you distribute it. And 2 sine theta cos theta. Can you see now why I wanted to pick that particular one? It cancels the 2's. And sine goes into sine squared once. So it actually equals sine over cos. Hey, what's sine over cos equal? 10. There we go. That's a nice simple answer for that. All right, example 4. Let's think about this guy. If the cosine of alpha is negative 4 fifths between, where alpha is between pi and pi by 2, and the cosine of beta is negative 12 thirds, where beta is between pi and 3 pi by 2, find cos alpha minus beta. Ooh, interesting. Okay, well, here's the thing. They've given us cos, th these two things are not on the unit circle, but they've given us enough information that we can, we can do some work here. Remember this skill, right? If alpha is between pi by 2 and pi. It's in this quadrant here, right? Because this is pi by 2 and this is pi. So it must be in here. So that means that that negative is going to go with the 4. So it's 4 this way. So it's negative 4 that way. It's got a denominator. Remember that this is opposite over hypotenuse. Sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is 5. Hypotenuse can't be negative anyway. So there we go. I can now figure out using Pythagoras how long this side is. So that, why do I want to do that? Because it, I need to be able to find the sine of alpha. And you probably don't need to use Pythagoras here, but in case, in case you don't see this triangle coming, x squared plus negative 4 squared equals 5 squared. Gee, I wonder what that x is. So x squared plus 16 is equal to 25. x squared is equal to 9. x is equal to 3. Now remember, when you square root here, it can be plus or minus 3. But notice, in this quadrant, and I should have called this y. I don't know why I didn't call this y. Why? 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 Because I know x. Because, I don't know, I was just talking to hear myself talk, and I didn't think. So there we go. So that's y squared plus negative 4 squared. So the y value here is positive. So I'm going to say it's positive 3. Remember, when you square both sides, it could be plus or minus. But it's positive 3. All right, let's do the same thing for this one. We know that it's between pi and 3 pi by 2. So it's down here in this quadrant. And it's down in this quadrant. Again, the, the um, hypotenuse can't really be a negative, but the 12 is a negative. Right? And so I would like to know this y value. Okay, so again, uh, x squared plus y, and that's a negative, but I'm squaring it, so it's going to go away. x squared plus y squared equals 13 squared, so that's 144 plus y squared equals 169. This is another one that you might not remember from grade 8 as a perfect uh, Pythagorean triplet, we used to call that. 169 minus uh, 144 is 25, so y is equal to, again, plus or minus 5, but this time, in this quadrant, y is going to be negative, so it's negative 5. I do believe I'm ready for my formula now. Cosine of alpha minus beta is, let's see, what's the formula for cos alpha minus beta? There it is, right there. So it's cos, cos plus sine, sine. So it is cos, cos plus sine, sine. And I knew two of those numbers going in. I knew the two cosine numbers. But now I know that the sine, this one, what one was this? This one was alpha. The sine of alpha is 3 over 5. And here, thanks to this calculation, I know that the sine of, this one was beta, is negative 5 over 13. Get why it's negative? Because I figured out that I'm in that quadrant. So, 
cos alpha times cos beta, they gave me those two things. That's negative 4 fifths and negative 12 thirteenths plus sine of alpha is 3 fifths. Sine of beta is negative 5 thirteenths. Um, I can do a little bit of simplification here. 5 goes into itself once. So, although, you know what? Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Because I can see I have a common denominator if I don't simplify that. So, 4 times 12 is 48. The negatives cancel. So, I have 48 over 65 plus negative 15 over 65. And 48 minus 15 over 65 is 33 60 fifths. And can I simplify that? Does 3 go into 65? No, that's it. That doesn't simplify. That's the right answer. And uh, there you go. And just for fun, again, I can check this with my calculator. Again, you're not allowed to calculate on questions like this on the exam or anything like that. I mean, not that we're having an exam this year, but, you know, let's pretend. So if I said I wanted the cosine of uh, alpha, okay, so hang on a sec. So, ooh, actually this is a little more work to do with my calculator than I thought. The cosine of alpha is negative four fifths, and I'm in quadrant, uh, whatever I am, I'm in quadrant two. So, okay, this will take a little bit of work here. Check this out. So the inverse cosine of four fifths is 0.643. Okay, let's, we're going to have to remember that number. And that's in here, so pi minus that, pi minus that answer. There we go. So there's there's the, the angle in radians, 2.49. And, okay, so now i got to find the angle for beta. Beta is 12 thirteenths. So the inverse cosine of 12 thirteenths, 0.39. And, okay, that one was in quadrant 3, right? So I'm going to have to add pi to get to that angle. So pi plus my answer. There we go. Now, this is something you can do with these fancy calculators. I need to find the cosine of the first angle minus the second. So I want the cosine of this angle minus this one. I'm honestly not sure if this is going to work. The cosine of that angle minus that angle. Oh, wait, no. That angle. And close the brackets and hit equals. Let's see, is that exactly equal to 33 60 fifths? Woohoo! I actually wasn't sure if that was going to work because that's a lot of fancy button pushing I did there. But it works. Actually, in a sense, this was easier. More work, but less button punching. Anyway, those are the kinds of problems you have to do in the 6.2 assignment. So, oh, there's a, sorry, one more. One more to go. All right, determine the exact values of sine two theta. Okay, so we gotta find the exact values of sine two theta. Let's see, where are we, how are we gonna figure that out? Let's see. Mm -hmm. First of all, where'd my formula sheet go? See, I set things down and then I can't, there it is, okay, there we go. Okay, so what's sine two theta again? Well, sine two theta doesn't have any choices. Sine two theta is, according to the formula sheet, two sine alpha cos alpha. Oh, sorry, we're not using alphas, we're using thetas. Same thing, doesn't matter what variable you use. But, you know, back when they were marking provincials, if you switch variables in the middle of a, of a question, they, they tell you to take off half a mark. So to be uh, to be precise and, and to do very nice, neat, easy to follow work, don't switch variables in the middle of the question. So two sine theta is two sine theta cos theta. Groovy. Now, what do I need for that? Well, obviously they gave me sine theta, they didn't give me cos theta, so I'm back to making triangles. Uh, I am between zero and pi by two, so I'm in quadrant one. And in quadrant one, if sine is three over five, that's y, and I need to figure out the x value. So x squared plus three squared equals five squared. Boy, they've been really good at giving us Pythagorean triplets, haven't they? This will be positive in that quadrant, so it'll be a four. So this is going to be a sine, so this is theta, right? Sine of theta is going to be four fifths. So this is going to be two times four fifths for sine theta and three fifths for cosine theta, which is going to be, um, let's see, that's going to be eight times three is 24 
25ths. Sounds good. Okay. And sine cos to theta. Okay, this one's a, a little trickier because notice, again, I have three different things to choose from. But you know what? The fact that I have three things to choose from means that I don't necessarily, if this had only been the question, if there hadn't been an A part, I wouldn't have had to have figured out um, the, oh, this was, oh man, this was cosine. Made a mistake there, sorry. I wouldn't have had to have figured out this cosine, right? Because the cosine, I, I would need it if I used this version or this version, but I don't need it for that version. So the cos of two theta, according to this version of the formula, is one minus two sine squared theta. And I know sine theta, it's three fifths. So that's one minus two times um, the sine of theta is three fifths. So that's three fifths squared. Uh, don't forget your bed mass, you're squaring before you're multiplying. So that's 9 25ths. So that's 1 minus 18 25ths. That, of course, is 25 25ths. And 25 minus 18 is 7. So the final answer is 7 25ths. There we go. Sorry about the cosine mistake there. Anyway, that's the kind of stuff that you're going to be working on on the 6.2 assignment. So uh, this, this is just extra work if you want extra practice. Uh, the assignment you should be doing is, of course, right here in this booklet here. That page right there. Okay, so good luck on that. Have fun with it. I love this stuff. This is fun for me. Talk to you later.